Okay, here on this table, I have the guts out of that transmission case, tail shaft housing, uh, bell housing, um, and so on. Uh, I don't have the hydraulics included. They're on a the table behind me. We'll take a look at those next. But these are the guts that make up the uh, planetary gear sets. And uh, we will put these together put this together and look at the uh, power flow through this four speed automatic transmission. For some reason I always thought I always thought the uh, first automatic transmission must have been a two speed because I'd always heard of the GM uh, power glide transmission. But uh, turns out that was just a, a cheap transmission that was put in Chevrolet's uh, at the time. Uh, this was a very expensive transmission that went in um, more expensive uh, vehicles. Okay, so um, this is a three shaft uh, transmission design. We have what's called the main shaft right here, and this is going to go up into not what's called a torque converter. It's not a torque converter. Uh, this is what's called a torus. Uh, and, I, and if you look up the defi definition of torus, like I had to, it uh, basically refers to the circular movement of fluid as inside of today's uh, torque converters. Uh, the difference between a torus and a torque converter is that a torus does not have the stator in it. It does not have a stator. And if you recall from my other videos on automatic transmissions and torque converters, uh, the stator's job is to multiply engine torque. So this does not have a stator. This is just what's referred to basically as a fluid coupling. But it's a little more advanced than that on this vehicle. Remember I told you the, the patent by uh, Thomas Kelly was unique in the design of this particular uh, fluid coupling. Okay, so we have a main shaft that hooks to the Taurus. Notice it's also a sun gear that is going to connect into what's we would call today the output shaft. They called it the driven shaft back then. Uh, there are two different output shafts or driven shafts uh, from back then. The one that has this three planet carrier um, option was the very first design from 1940. Um, it uh, went with lower horsepower, lower torque engines. Uh, by the time this 1953 uh, Cadillac came around, they had upgraded it and, and it had gone to a four planet pinion or four pinion uh, planet carrier. Um, now, this between 1940 and 1953 was World War II, and this transmission was also used uh, with Cadillac uh, engines in the M5 tank and a, and a few other uh, military uh, vehicles. Uh, the M5, M5 tank had two Cadillac engines, two hydromatic transmissions. The transmissions faced forward. Each engine and transmission controlled one track, one side of the tank, um, and it made it a lot easier to uh, maneuver the tank with the automatic uh, transmission rather than a manual uh, transmission. Um, so going through the, the war, uh, this transmission that was developed in 1940, uh, or released in 1940, if you recall, uh, 1941, December 7, 1941, is when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and, and the United States entered World War II at that point. Uh, the hydromatic transmission was brand new. Uh, it, it was, what, two years old? Uh, uh, and it, it was in its infancy, and so to be used in uh, World War II, uh, it grew up really fast. It, I'm sure it went through some growing pains, and by the time it was, the war was over, uh, Cadillac was advertising the transmission as uh, a battle-tested. And there's several uh, magazine ads that, that you can see here that show the transmission in tanks and military operation and so on. All right, so back to the, back to the transmission here. So we've got our, our main shaft. 
we have our driven shaft or output shaft. Notice the sun gear just splines right into our uh, output or, or driven shaft. So there's two of the three shafts involved in this three shaft uh, transmission. The other shaft is called the intermediate shaft and it has splines on the front here that also connect into a part inside the torus and this shaft is going to slide down over this one. Those are the three shafts that make up this transmission. All right, well, let's, let's build each shaft and put it together and talk about the parts. Remember, this is the first successful mass-produced automatic transmission. And so although these parts may look familiar to you, that these were new and, and never used uh, components uh, prior to the initial development of, of the automatic transmission uh, at General Motors here. All right, so um, on the uh, intermediate uh, shaft here, we are going to have two clutch packs uh, that are going to connect to this intermediate shaft. We'll have a front clutch pack and a rear uh, clutch pack. The front clutch pack is going to slide down inside of this uh, front unit brake drum and spline to the teeth here on the intermediate shaft, which is also the planet carrier for the front planetary gear set. Now this transmission has three planetary gear sets uh, in it. I want you to also notice that this clutch drum that the clutch pack would go inside of has a band that wraps around it and can stop the drum from rotating when the band is applied. That's a unique design. Uh, there, there were bands, mechanical applied uh, bands and hydraulic applied bands in the development up to this transmission, this particular transmission, but um, this is the first time they were all put together in one, one package. So the clutch piston for that front clutch pack actually has the front unit sun gear on it. And so we'll slide that in here. This drum right here, this front, front clutch drum attaches to this front clutch cover right here. So when I t use this piece and talk about this piece in this demonstration, I want you to think of it as turning this entire uh, brake drum assembly right there. There's a snap ring that will hold the front clutch drum to the intermediate shaft. All right, snap ring's installed. Our front, our front unit sun gear is held in place now on our intermediate shaft. All right, uh, the next part that goes on is the internal gear or ring gear for the front planetary gear set. Um, by the way, this transmission uses very few bearings in the traditional sense as far as roller uh, or needle bearings. There's a lot of bushing, so there's a, a bronze uh, brass bushing uh, in between almost every two uh, rotating components. And so we're going to slide this front internal gear onto our planetary gear set. And it has its own brass bushing and a little washer and another snap ring that holds it in place. Okay. Now, the, the teeth on this front internal gear also connect to the torus. So we actually have three rotating shafts that connect to the torus over here. We've got our main shaft, which is going to come up through the middle here. So 
So right here, we've got the main shaft, the intermediate shaft, and then the front uh, internal gear has its own teeth. All three of these spin. That's unique. How many automatic transmissions today have three input shafts uh, that rotate? Um, normally, this shaft right here would be called the stator support, and it does not rotate on today's automatic transmissions. But there are three shafts um, that all connect to the torus or early torque converter, uh, as we've discussed there. All right, so we've got the front part of the intermediate shaft assembled. Now uh, to do the rear part. To do the rear part, there's what's called an oil delivery sleeve that has hydraulic passages, two hydraulic passages, one for the rear clutch pack, one for the front clutch pack. It has cast iron seal rings in here. So instead of the Teflon or plastic type uh, rings that you see in today's automatic transmissions to seal uh, fluid passages, these are cast iron and they wear out. Uh, there's a, a gap check where you can put a feeler gauge in between there uh, up in the bore where they go, kind of like piston rings to see if they're worn out. Uh, they are reusable, but you have to compress these to get them in. And there's actually a special service tool clear back from the hydromatic days uh, right here that will reach down over these cast iron rings and compress them so that you can slide the delivery sleeve into the housing that it needs to go in. So this needs to drop in with two seal rings compressed. There's both of them, both of them in right now. So we've got this oil delivery sleeve that sits here. Um, I forgot to show it to you, but in the transmission case itself, there's a part that looks like a uh, engine main bearing cap. I took a picture of that uh, center support, uh, what looks like a main bearing cap for you. Um, so that is going to give that main bearing cap looking piece in the transmission case is going to clamp on this oil delivery sleeve and support the transmission uh, stack up in the middle of all of it. So we'll have a bearing in the front, a bearing in the back, and a support here in the middle. Uh, there's two snap ring grooves right here that are going to hold the rear clutch pack uh, in place a rear clutch pack hub, I'm sorry. So we've just got a regular fiber and steel alternating clutch pack that's going to spline to this hub and sit on here uh, like this. Uh, it sits inside of this clutch drum where we also have a rear band that can sit over the top of it and when compressed would stop this, this housing from rotating. So let me get these snap rings on. Okay, there's one. I just realized that before I get that hub on there, I better get the rear clutch um, cover uh, where the piston goes to apply the rear clutch pack uh, installed here. So it's got its own uh, cast iron compression rings that fit up inside of this oil delivery uh, area. So we're going to set that down here, get our tool to compress the, the rings. There we go. Got those in place. Here comes our hub. Got a brass bushing on each side. Get on there. And then one more 
snap ring to hold that in place. Okay. All right. So the intermediate shaft right here is fully assembled. The only thing that's missing is that normally this drum would sit right here and this drum would sit right here. But those can't be on there and have me show you how this transmission works. And so once again, this piece right here called the front front clutch cover will represent this entire piece the rear clutch cover will represent this entire piece all right so i've got a little holding fixture right here i'm gonna set this up on here just like that center support um, what looks like a bearing cap uh, would do inside the transmission. It will hold this whole intermediate shaft uh, in place. All right, now uh, the next thing is we are going to take our uh, main shaft here, which is also the rear unit sun gear, and put it up uh, inside. And then we have the output shaft or the driven shaft as they called it back then to assemble to assemble the driven shaft we will take the the rear planetary gear set so remember there's three planetary gear sets we've got the front planetary gear set up right up front here here's the ring gear the planet carrier the sun gear is connected to the the uh, front clutch uh, cover. The rear planetary gear set bolts, or the sun gear, bolts to the rear clutch drum. So in other words, the sun gear, I'm sorry, the planet ring gear here, the internal gear, bolts to this rear clutch cover. So if this turns, so does this. So this is our rear planetary gear set internal gear here's our rear planetary gear set planet carrier so we will set this down on here we have a snap ring for that also holds it in place okay so that's held in place and that is our planet carrier the ring gear and then the sun gear right here that connects to our main shaft so all of that is going to just spline together here but before we do that the third planetary gear set that's in this transmission, which is pretty unique, uh, is only to get reverse. Um, now today, we don't need a separate planetary gear set to get reverse, but back then, this is, this is how they designed it. So we have a third planet carrier with three pinions. We have what's called a governor drive gear right here that'll spin the the governor as we've uh, talked about before increases and decreases pressure with uh, vehicle speed um, and this is going to spline right to the output shaft the the driven shaft itself so if this turns so does the planet or the the output shaft so that just sits right if i get everything lined up right down there like that all right so we've got the sun gear that's bolted to the rear planetary gear set we have the reverse and even though you might think this is the rear planetary gear set this is the reverse planetary gear set so we've got a sun gear a planet carrier here's the reverse 
internal gear right here. It has a little spring plate in there that I'm, that I'm going to leave out for this demonstration because it won't stay in place unless it's assembled in the transmission. But we are going to put this internal gear now on over the reverse planet carrier. And now we have our third planetary gear set um, installed. So let's put this whole thing together. There we go. So once again, the rear clutch drum bolts to this ring gear and slides into this rear clutch cover. There's a clutch pack in here and then the rear band wraps around this and can stop it. So the clutch pack is going to cause this to rotate. The band will stop it from rotating. Same thing up front here. The front clutch pack will cause this housing to rotate. The front band will stop it from rotating. So basically these pieces put together constituted the automatic safety transmission and they had a manual transmission clutch pack in front of this and you still had a clutch pedal. Uh, this could be automatically shifted through four gears um, but the missing link that took uh, another engineer, uh, Thomas Kelly, uh, to come along and uh, bring to the, bring to the uh, group is the fluid coupling that today has evolved into the torque converter. So to understand power flow through this transmission assembly, we need to understand the fluid coupling first, because remember we have one, two, three rotating input shafts. This one rotates, this one rotates, and this one rotates. Uh, that's, that's unique. It took me, <laughs> took me quite a while to figure this one out because I'm so used to today's uh, modern uh, transmissions. All right, so let me slide the guts of the transmission out of the way, and let's bring in the Taurus.